Hi, I'm Kent. Let's use 3D printing to help us make a slip casting mold out of plaster. In the last several videos, we've been doing a deep dive into making plaster molds, and I've made all of these molds here. First, we started with a very simple container and copy that. That let us create this mold here and resulted in this pot here, which is bone dry. So it's the same shape. I just cut the top off since it has this funky rim here. I just cleaned that up manually. Next, I made a copy of this planter here. So it fits down inside here. And making this mold, we did two things. One is we poured the plaster upside down, so any of the bubbles would go towards the what would be the bottom surface for slip casting. That results in a nicer finish for our pot. The other thing we did is this piece right here. This here is a slip well, and the idea is that we pour the slip above the edge of the pot. That way, as the slip goes down, as the water is absorbed, it doesn't actually impact the pot itself. So this results in a pot like this. This one here is bone dry with a nice rim. And here's a finished pot exact same form. So to create the pot shape itself, obviously we used this as the form. To create the slip well, we used a piece of foam. So I had to create this for one and then adhere them together so that we could pour the plaster around it. And in the last video we went into two part molds, so we made a copy of this form here. It goes something like that. And again we had to modify the form, so we added a slip well on top. Again, using the foam, and we wind up with a copy of the pot just like that. As we've been progressing through these molds, we've been making them better, but so far we've always been copying existing containers. So these are the three that we've done so far. However, in adding the slip well, we actually had to modify the containers. Again, using the foam. So we aren't really making a copy anymore. We're making a copy of something slightly modified. Beyond that, all of these pots will shrink. As we go through the process, we start with something that's this big and we end up with something this big. Well, what if I want a pot that's this big? It means we can't actually copy the existing container. Somehow we need to scale it up to account for the shrinkage. So for my particular clay, I've measured the shrinkage. The finished pot is 87% of the size of the original. So I've lost 13%. Or going the other way, if I want to scale it up, I need to scale this pot up by 15% to get to this size. If I know the final size of pot that I want, I can take that and then scale up the form. However, I can't modify this form at all. So this is where 3D printing comes into play. It is relatively easy to change the size when we're 3D printing. In the slicer itself, there's a setting that lets you manipulate the size, so you can scale up or down. If you have a form that you already like, you can see what it'll look like when it's already shrunk down by scaling it down. Or if you have a pot that you like the final size of, you can scale it up so you know what you need to make a slip cast mold of. So here is a form that I 3D printed. You can imagine finding an existing form on the internet somewhere and wanting to make a mold out of that. This one I actually designed, but I'll talk about that in future videos. And I just printed this out on draft settings to get a size. So let's assume that I want the finished pot this size. Well, that means I need to make a mold that's larger. In particular, I need to make a mold that's this big, at least for my clay. So this here is accounting for the shrinkage. So it's the same version, just scaled up. And again, that's a relatively easy setting to do in the slicer. I can take this form, multiply it by 1.15, that gets me this form here. At this point, we can do exactly what we've been doing in the past several videos. We can go ahead and cut out something to make a slip well, attach it together, put it down, build the cotton board structure around it, make our mold. We can then slip cast the pot, and when it finally shrinks and we fire it, we should wind up with a cup that is very similar to this size. So if you have access to a 3D printer but don't know how to do modeling, that's actually a great way to go and make new forms. So we've been limited so far into the forms that we wanted to do based upon containers we could find. By using 3D printing, we vastly open up our options. We still need to take into account draft angles. So this one here is a one piece mold. There's a draft angle all the way down. In the previous video, I showed you how to do a two part mold. Same principles apply. Instead of using a found object to make a mold of, we're just printing our own. However, I really don't like modifying our forms. And this here is a modification of the form that we need to make the slip well. And since we're 3D printing this, well, why don't we go ahead and print this as part of it as well? And that's what I have here. I went ahead and made a copy of the exact same form. So these are the same. This one's printed on a draft setting. This one's actually final printing, so it's much better quality. And I went ahead and modeled it in a slip well. This one's slightly smaller than the foam. I've mostly been doing this size out of convenience. But once we're in 3D modeling land, we can do anything we want. And this one actually still has the supports inside of it. This is using the Prusa slicer with the organic supports. 
this is the surface we want to make a mold of. And so I printed this going this direction. So I actually don't care about the inside at all. And actually leaving in the supports may make it easier to go ahead and make a mold. So now we can put this inside of a container and just pour plaster in. We don't need to do any preparation to our form at all, except for put on mold release agent and clean up a few of the 3D printing artifacts maybe. It happens that I have a container that will fit this mold perfectly. So I can put this down in here just like that. And I have some space around for the plaster so it can form the lip. And I can just fill this up with plaster all the way to the top. And that will create the plaster mold that we need to make this final cup. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and make a plaster mold of this new form. This bucket will work for the outside of the plaster. So what we need to do is secure this down into the bucket. And for that, I'm gonna use silicone. And this is where the 3D printed supports will come in handy as well. I can put some silicone down there to help it secure. So let's put a blob here in the middle. And I wanna make sure I get a good seal all the way around the outside edge. So plaster doesn't leak. I can put some more here just to help hold it down a little bit. All right, so take this and center it down on the bottom. All right, squish it around, it's all attached. I'll go ahead and clean up that excess silicone and we'll let it cure. Next, we'll be pouring plaster. We need to figure out how much plaster needs to go in here. So I know my bucket here is five liters to the very top. And we need to subtract out the amount of space taken up by our mold before we measured that. However, because this is 3D modeled, I can actually use the 3D model to figure out the volume. So I went into my 3D software and pulled out the volume. It turns out that this is 1.33 liters. That is both the volume of the form for the pot as well as the slip well. So we do some math, five liters minus 1.33 is 3.67. And I wanna round things up just to have some buffer. So I'm gonna round that up to four. To do four liters worth of plaster, I need four kilograms of dry plaster. It's basically a one to one. That's why we're measuring things in liters. And then it's a ratio of 70 parts of water to 100 parts of plaster. So we need to multiply the four by 0.7. That winds up being 2.8 liters of water. And I have those measured out. Here is the four kilograms of plaster and here is the 2.8 kilograms or 2.8 liters of water. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this in and start letting it slake. All right, so I'm gonna let that slake for three and a half minutes. So now let's go ahead and put the mold release on. Went ahead and make sure there wasn't any dust in here and the silicone's all set, so we're good. I right, got a bunch on, I'm just gonna liberally coat everything. mostly care about the 3D print since it's got a little bit of texture from printing. However, it won't hurt to get the bucket as well. I'm a little bit worried about this 3D print coming out. There's a delicate balance between the print being strong enough to hold back the plaster and it being thin enough and therefore flexible enough to get back out of the plaster. And this has relatively shallow draft angles, so we will see. All right, this is done slaking, now we mix. All right, four minutes of mixing. See if I can shake some of the bubbles to the top. I'm gonna pour it in and try and miss the 3D print as much as possible. It's really nice using a form for the plaster that does not leak. Top. It should go basically all the way to the top. All right, we still got a little bit left. That's why we round up, just to make sure. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let this set and we'll come back to it for demolding. Okay, the plaster is set and is cool. Let's see if we can demold this. So first we'll see if we can break through the outside. Since this is silicone down, I think it may take a little bit of effort. I'm gonna go straight to using air. Oh, it broke free. It's raising up. Yay, air pressure. There we go. Pop 
loose. Our silicone leaked a little bit. We got a little bit of plaster on the inside, but not too bad. So now I'm going to clean up this top lip here to make sure that there's no plaster over the 3D print. All right, so now for the moment of truth, can we get 3D print out of the plaster? Oh, no, it's free. Yay. These organic supports are awesome, actually. It's a great handle. So let's check out our mold. You can see some of the layer lines here. It's kind of fun. A little bit of a bubble there, a little bit of a bubble there. But otherwise, this mold looks awesome. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and break this edge here. All right, there we go. One brand new mold. That looks awesome. And my 3D print actually looks like it's in really good shape. So I think I could probably make another of this as well. That's great news. All right, same drill as all the other molds. We're going to go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll try a, a pot. Mold is all dried out now. I just mixed up my slip. Let's go ahead and pour a pot. all the way up into the well. A side benefit of the slip well, in addition to fixing the room like we've talked about, is that I don't have to quite get my table level. I think my bench is slightly askew, but because the level of the slip's high enough, I can wind up with an even room no matter what. It's not gonna get below that shelf. All right, let's let this sit and form the pot. Dump the slip out. There's the beginning of our pot. So now I'll let this drain the rest of the way. That'll go ahead and firm up as the plaster continues to suck out water. Let's come back when it's time to pull it out. Let's check out the pot. Looks good. We are starting to release here. I think we have a good wall. So we'll cut down to the shelf and then trim it. Okay, the top edge looks really good. Let's see if we can pull it out. Perfect. It's still very soft, but it's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and let that firm up a little bit more and give you a better look at it. You can see some of the artifacts from the 3D print coming through. There's a faint line right here, and that's the seam in the mold right here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry all the way out and fire it, and we'll see what the surface finish looks like at that point. From there, we can decide if I want to go ahead and clean up the pot while it's still green, or we can also look at ways to improve the 3D print if we need to. One of the nice things about having this integrated slip well in the mold is that I can cut the rim off much more cleanly. In past iterations, since I had to attach the slip well to the form, I wound up with a seam right here that wasn't as clean as I wanted. I actually wound up with some chip out on some of my molds. Since this was printed as one piece, I actually have a really nice line here, which means I can cut across it very easily. This is definitely moving in the right direction, letting the mold do the work for me. I still want to sponge this off and smooth it over, but this so far is looking really good. So we made an exact copy of our 3D printed piece, less the slip well. So here is the scaled up version we used as the prototype in the beginning of the video. And here is the version that should be about the size of the final one. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry out the rest of the way and go ahead and fire it. And we'll see how close we got with the size. I had a good glaze firing. Let's check out the pot. Overall, it looks really good to me. It's pretty clean. So one of the things we were curious about was the size. So we started with clay that was that big, and we thought it would shrink to something like this, and to me, that is basically right on. Maybe there's some slight differences, but it's really, really close. And it's always crazy how much clay shrinks. I was a little worried that there might be some artifacts from 3D printing. So here's our mold, and there are some layer lines in it. They're not too bad, but I can kind of sort of feel them. Here, I feel almost nothing. It's actually pretty smooth. 
There's some horizontal banding here. You can see it in the print. That's actually an artifact of the way I created a 3D print. Basically what happened is when I created a 3D print, I revolved it around the central axis and I didn't use a very high resolution. I think if I bumped the resolution, I would actually wind up with a smoother surface. There was our artifact from the seam line. That's right here. So there's our artifact from the seam line and it is visible. This is unglazed, so it's just the raw clay. So any defects are gonna show through. I can feel it a little bit. So this is something we may want to clean up a little bit as well in future 3D prints. While I was at it, I went ahead and slip cast the second one. And that's this one here. This one I went ahead and sanded a little bit when it was bone dry. I doubt this will come through on video, but these feel almost exactly the same. This one might be a little bit smoother, but I think that's more the horizontal banding ridges from the original 3D print as opposed to any of the filament lines. There's some slight differences in the foot. The original is a little bit more rough. So I think we also want to pay a little bit more attention to the original 3D print. But overall, I don't think we're going to have to post-process these pots to get a nice quality result. I think the 3D print, even with the FDM printer, might be good enough. We'll see. We'll definitely iterate on this a little bit more. The other thing I wanted to show off is the rim. So with the integrated slip well, I was able to trim that off very cleanly. And I just took a sponge and wiped it off a little bit. Overall, I think this is a win in the process as well. It's much easier to create this rim than in the previous versions. Overall, I'm going to call that a success. We were able to address some of the problems we've had in our previous videos, we were able to scale the pot up to address for the shrinkage, and we integrated the slip well, and that let us get a nice rim. In the next video, I'm going to dive in a little bit more into how I created this 3D model and the associated 3D print. As I alluded to, I've been working on some software to try and make this more automated. I have an initial version working, and so in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about that. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.